today we begin with the Nico drawing nibs. You guys saw me cover these in an overview. We're just gonna work our way down the line. And I purchased these at Kino Cunha in San Jose, California. But I'm sure you can find them online. So we're gonna begin today with the Nico pen, come on, come on, number 357. And we've got our Tachikawa G holder, or rather just our Tachikawa holder. Fits nice and neat. We've got our sketch. This is in the Strathmore 500 series, Plate Bristol Visual Journal. And we're going to be using FW acrylic ink in pain in the booty butt gray. And I'll refill my little easy inking cup. Do that off camera. I'm gonna need some more ink before we're all said and done said done buried so I said go spoon 357 and already it writes well that is a relief after that jalot that I couldn't get to ink the other day and it is capable of a very fine line. You can push it and get a little bit more line weight variation in there, but this is a manga nib, so it's gonna be a lot of fine lines. In fact, I think I've heard someone refer to spoon nibs as shoujo manga nibs because they are excellent for very, very fine lines. Now, despite having read a lot of shoujo in my lifetime, I'm really more of a, a senin and a shonen kind of gal. So I usually use a G-nib because it's got a lot of bounce and a lot of flex. But spoon nibs are good too, and they don't put down a whole lot of ink, which is great if you need, if you want to use this to actually draw comic pages and you need to be able to work in a timely, fairly fast manner. The reduction in ink on paper is a reduction in waiting to be able to go back into a panel. And I checked Paper and Ink Arts because I was just about ready to buy myself a calligrapher's bridge, which would be super handy if you could get one big and low enough for comic artists because it means you can just keep inking. The calligrapher bridge basically allows you to rest your hand but not on the paper. So you're never dragging your hand through wet ink. And they don't seem to carry them anymore. Now I know they had someone actually make the calligrapher's bridges for them. So maybe that was what was going on. personally find a lot of these Japanese nibs to be easy inkers. Um, they're not really fussy. They don't really require a lot of special care. Uh, you can use them for years as long as you take decent care of them. They will continue to do what is asked of them. I know they can be a little harder to find uh, and they can also be a little more expensive. But for me, not having a finagle Oh man, I really messed that line up. Not having to finagle with a nib 
is worth the extra effort getting the nib. And I'll make it easy for you guys to find these if you like what you see by linking them in the description below. Now I'm doing a hot mess of a job inking Kara's face today and that's just unfortunate. But that's the way it is. And that doesn't reflect poorly on the snib. And it's a bit of a sturdy nib. Not too flexible. It doesn't seem to have those cutouts on the side that add extra flex. So you can probably spring the nib if you are trying to apply too much pressure in order to get G-nib levels of flex. This is just not that kind of a nib. And it is fairly gentle on the paper surface. It's not going to tear up your paper. Or, I mean, you'd really have to apply some pressure, pressure, under pressure, to get it to tear up your paper, to wreck your surface, to ruin what you got. Could be a big, good beginner nib. Very easy to ink with nib. Doesn't tear up your paper. Right, so that was a look at the Nico Spoon 357. This nib was purchased at Kino Cunha in San Jose, California, and the whole pack was probably about $10. You can check the description below for where you can buy your own. And if I use an, an Amazon link that is an affiliate link and you purchasing the nib through that link helps me out a lot. I see a small bounty for that purchase. So thank you guys so much for watching today's nib review. I'm going to be reviewing another Nico nib for the next five days. So I hope you guys will look forward to that. And I hope this has empowered you to try inking with a dip pin nib yourself. If you're looking for more nib reviews, you can find them here on my channel. Um, you can find them in my Inktober 2017 playlist as well as my Advanced Inking Techniques playlist. So I hope you guys have a great day and I hope to see you again tomorrow with another review. Bye guys!